On tonight's show, we're going to deal with that Candle JCTV0500. That's the little 5-inch color set that I picked up there last week. We're going to take a look at that one, see what's wrong with it. It's not turning on. We'll see what we can do with this one. So this is the little 5-inch color set, and it don't work at all. So when I got this, the guy said it worked. It was his brother's set, though. It sold it to me. He said it, he thought it worked, but... This one obviously is not working, so uh, let's take it apart and see why. Well, this set was made in Japan. As you can see here, 1980, June 1980. So, don't know how many of these TVs they made. They probably made tons of these ones. I had one exactly the same. In, uh, in 1980, I'm sure, that's when I got mine, 79 or 80, I don't know how many years they made these. But I had one for camping. My parents had a, had a uh, like a Winnebago, big motorhome. And uh, we took one of these with us so that we could watch TV when we were camping. And I, when I, whenever I would borrow it, I would take it out because you know, I, could, I could drive it from time I got my license 79 was, I think it was a 74 um, Winnebago that they had anyway uh, I used to take this TV with me like the little set not this TV because I just got this one but I had one identical to this and I used to take it with me and then when it wasn't when we weren't camping I had it in my room kind of commandeered it out of the camper when it wasn't being used in the summer months when everyone was camping and using the, the motorhome it stayed out there and then I had it and then and then my mother decided that she was going to commandeer it for me so she could watch TV in the kitchen so then it ended up being put in the kitchen and it stayed there and it it lasted for many years finally the um, Finally, the picture tube went on it. It got to the point where you couldn't see a picture, and at that point, it was uh, it was tossed out. This is also an Orion set. See, their picture tube is Orion. Flyback is probably Orion as well. Look at this capacitor just mounted. stuck to the chassis what the heck's that or is that a coil anyway it's just stuck down between two screws what the heck have they what were they thinking all right so this thing's got no power it's got a power supply on it maybe there's a power supply issue on this one it's been so long since i've been into one of these i can't forget how it uh, comes apart okay, that's the power leads i think so we got uh, two boards on this. We've got the deflection board over here, and then this one here is the uh, the tuner and the AV and the, the chroma board. And tuning is done by means of a, just a, a variable resistor that changes the tuning voltage to the tuner. And it's going to work just like the other one. It probably has the settings for the low and the high adjustments as well I think it does oh, those are color controls uh, frequency Just looking at, I think the settings are down here these are the limit screws for the settings but let's see why this thing's not working it's got a fuse in it let's check the fuse first and see if the fuse is, is no good So the fuse is okay. Hmm. Let's just plug in the power again and see whether anything's working. Uh, ground. 
Got nothing. Nothing on. Oh, wait a minute. I have power. I have 18 volts there. I have 18 volts there. So, the power supply is working there. What about to the TV? Nothing. Hmm. Okay, so there's nothing going to the TV, but I have 18 volts on the fuse. I wonder if it's a switch. There's a switch. When you plug in the cord, there's a switch that gets activated uh, right here on the plug. I wonder if that switch is, is uh, working. Hmm. I guess the easiest way to check it is to remove the power supply. So I can see there's a couple screws that hold the power supply in, and then I can tip this whole transformer out and we can actually uh, see whether it's a switch or whether there's a connection on the board. Uh, there's power getting through it. 18 volts on the fuse on both sides. So we know that the transformer is working, but we don't have any power getting down to the set itself. So something on this board is... Uh, likely the fault. that what else is holding this up wires to the battery compartment okay these are the connections here this is the two AC pins going in and these are the switch going to pass the DC and uh, some of these connections in here look pretty uh, pretty flaky I'm just gonna resolder a couple of these connections here then we'll try it again and see whether it turns on just waiting for my soldering iron to warm up There's another switch over here, the DC plug. Just redo that one as well. There's a couple switches on here. And we know it's good at the we know it's good here, the fuse. 
Okay, let's just try it again now that I've just done those connections. Make sure this isn't touching anything and that it is in the correct mode. Uh, normal, I charge. There's that switch there too. Okay, let's just try this again and see whether it works this time. Okay, first of all, we'll see if we've got any DC leaving the uh, power supply because before we had nothing. So 12 volts DC should be here. We have zero. Still zero. 18 volts there. Nothing here. Hmm. That is weird. Nothing. No power. Let's just see where we have voltage. 17 volts. Zero. Okay. 17 volts here so we got power getting through the switch where the hell are we losing the power 17 volts on both sides of the fuse we got nothing over here on the output so somewhere along the line we're losing power on this board Nothing over here. Well, the set just came on. I'm still thinking it might be that switch that's activated when you put the plug in. Voltages now are, are there, but I had those voltages before. So maybe not that switch. But for sure I was losing power on that board. Now the set's working. I was thinking perhaps for a minute there that just from the, uh, you see the indentation on that, uh, that power plug, that maybe that was causing the problem, but, and this, but by the way, I didn't realize the camera was recording. I thought I was in standby while I was testing. So this is footage of me actually going through it, not thinking I'm recording, that's why I'm not talking. I bet it's the switch. I bet you, bet you, bet you, it's the switch. It's, see, it's switched. When the switch is off, there's nothing. Okay, when the switch is off, there's nothing. Switch on, 10 volts. So it's leaving the power supply, coming up to the switch, and then going back down to this board. And that's done so that it can pick up the DC and the batteries. And then this is the output going to the TV. So as soon as this comes on, the TV's on. We got a bad switch on this one. I was thinking that the power left the board and went over to here and then it was switched, but it's not. It, it actually comes off the board. There's the 
orange and red wires here, which are connected over here, comes up to the switch and then it comes back over to this side. So, looks like the switch is bad. This is a jumper. Oh, maybe this jumper is bad. Oh, there's a regulator back here too. It might be on this board, actually. It, it looks like it could be this. It could be the regulator. There's a, it looks like the regulator's cracked back here. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there's a regulator transistor in here. It looks like maybe the connections on that are are kind of screwed. I'm just going to redo that one. It's either that or the power switch. But uh, definitely something, either the switch or something on this board. Just hate it when that happens. You're working on something that's not working and all of a sudden it just starts working. And then you don't know what you've done. Right. One thing for sure, when I soldered these it didn't make any difference because it was still off there. I'm just resoldering the regulator transistor inside here. Oops, don't want to bridge anything. Which I have. Now I gotta unbridge it. Kind of in an awkward position. Typical Orion TV. I think Orion, Orion made VCRs as well, if I remember. Oh, my MP3 player fell down from my uh, bottom of my shelf. I guess all the vibrations from that subwoofer earlier today pounding away on it uh, made it fall. All right, let's try this again, see whether it's going to work. Looks like that's working. I'm just going to put this power supply back into the cabinet and then we'll, we'll check out the TV and see how it works. See how the picture is and uh, clean up the controls and investigate how easy it would be to add a video input onto the set. If I'm going to put a video in on a on a TV, it, it would be this one. I don't know if I'll do it in this video or not, but um, we'll just see if the, get the TV working properly first, and then I'll see what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to do any mods to this one. I'll be getting my thumbs down from the Johnny Send Checks of the world. He knows how I said his name. Send check, as in send me a check, Johnny. Yeah, goofball. If I say his name, he'll he'll go crying to Google saying that I've I've exposed his his private information. So I won't say his name. I will just say send check, John. There. That's not your name. I'm just saying send a check. Get it? Goof. Life's too short for morons like that. Okay. All right, works. Okay, let's see if I got a picture on this piece of junk.
I got snow. I got lots of snow. All right, let's uh, try the low band. Ooh. I think that that, uh, that control is in bad shape. But it tunes in. Let's get some cleaner into that control. Let's see if it'll clean up. Uh, I think it's just a regular, just a regular uh, potentiometer on this one. May have to pull the uh, the set apart to get at it because it's kind of in the bottom of this uh, this drum. So let's see what the easiest way to get into this to clean it is. Pull the power for a sec. Don't want to get jolted by this one. This, this little bugger would have a few more volts in it than the black and white one. Probably around 20,000, I would think, on a, a set like this. It won't be no 30,000 like the like, like the uh, bigger sets would have, but I would imagine that this probably is running you know, probably close to 20,000. Between 15 and 20,000, I would I would guess. It's in Fukui, Fukui, Japan. June 1980. Quality Japanese design. Let's see how I can get this. I think this whole piece lifts out. There's a screw here. And there's another screw up there. I'm just looking to see how this whole bracket is in place. It looks like there's two or three screws to hold this bracket in place. Whether I can take it out or not is another story. And maybe just get in the bottom of that. Maybe just get the nozzle in here. And fire some neutral in the bottom. That might be the easiest way. Let's see if I can hit the hit the control. Flashlight out and see what I'm what I'm targeting here. How far in the bottom of this control is it? Uh, okay, it looks to be right there. Okay, and I could get lucky. Let's see if I can turn this TV on its side and see what I'm targeting. Hopefully not break the tube when I'm doing this. That's what I gotta get into is right into there. You see. You can probably get to it from here. Blast that with some neutral. I guess we'll figure out, we'll find out when I uh, turn the set on again whether I cleaned it enough. Oh yeah, I got it. Take a look at this. These bloody Sony cameras are annoying. The uh, database can only hold 3,998 3, files ever. So the files go from when you first initialize the memory card, they start out 0000. You would think that it would go to 9999, but it doesn't. It goes to 3998. The clip I was supposed to record would have been 03999, but it won't get to that. It, at 03998, that's the last clip it can record and then it just stops. So here I am talking away to the camera and I think I'm recording and I look up and the light's not on and I push the button and nothing happens. And I look on the screen and it says maximum number of files reached even though the, I delete the files. Once I've, once I'm done, I just copy the files over and delete them. But I don't 
reinitialize the card and then I run out of space even though the, the card only had like 15 files on it I'm out of space because the database right the database on it was ridiculous anyway so you missed what I was saying anyway this is fixed as you can see it no longer jumps all over the place let's check the volume control their economic time so they are dependent both you probably could use the cleaning as well this one's easy to get at though it's right here so we'll just give this one a shot of cleaner as well we're at it there we go Are observing the 77th anniversary of one of the deadliest battles of World looks War like, II. Looks like all the controls could use a cleaning, so we'll just. Uh, More than 200,000 people lost their lives, including roughly one fourth of the island's residents. Okinawa recognizes June 23rd. Give all the controls a, a clean. As the final day of organized combat between the Imperial Japanese military and US led forces. Since Thursday morning, people have been visiting the cornerstone of peace. It's located in a park that sits where some of the fiercest fighting happened in a battle's climactic moments. This woman in her late 70s lost her father before she could see him. I never had the chance to get to know my father. I hope society can learn to live without conflict so that fewer people experience what I have been through. Only about 10% of Okinawa's current population was alive before the end of the World War II. Those born after... Just clean the uh, brightness contrast to understand or brightness picture battle. color and... My kids and I will spend today a few controls. reflecting on how grateful we are better. to spend every day living in peace. There we go. At noon, people this ascending TV's got the actually got a pretty good picture on it. This is uh, NHK, by the way, that I'm tuned into here. This is the free channel that's available. It's on a on a PBS subcarrier or sub channel. NHK World Service. the news and then I think this adapter of this 75 ohm to 300 ohm is uh, is leaving something to be desired and getting a bit of interference on it. VHF high band. Jean Michel Jarre live in Monaco off the internet. And the next one down will be my cameras. There's my cameras. Story TV. It's coming in good. I think this is this matching transformer is needs to be replaced. And I don't get my time if, I'm, if I if I tweak the uh, the high band low range I should be able to get that time coming in off of channel 17. That would be this control over here. The VHF high and low limit setting. There we go. Now I can tune the clock in on this one. See if I can get the other one, the high end of the band. To track. Go up to 12. Nine. 
7 will be off a little bit because I've done like I did on the other set. I tuned it down so I could go down to the low end of the band and tune in channel 17. Not that I'd be sitting on channel 17 watching at the time display on, on a color set because it's not in color. This, this particular one is just black and white. Although I do have other clock displays that would actually show a color picture. But this one just does black and white. But anyway. Nice to have that ability. Back to Story TV. On this set, if we want to take the composite output and add a video input, we have composite output. It's right on this pin here. Pin 17. Pin 17 is my composite. Right here, pin 17. Composite video. I'll show you guys the scope. There's our composite video. That's my security camera that's just playing there. And for the sound, let me just find something that's got sound on it. So the sound is picked off the IF by a separate sound detector, another chip. So there's no audio coming off the uh, YCJ as far as sound goes, just the IF strip where the sound is fed to the audio I IC. Let's chip up and see what, 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 what it has on it. This is the IF and signal processing chip. Probably take the video right there. It's the input to uh, the transistor, it's a video input, um, video amplifier, uh, a transistor. This is probably where I could inject video, external video, right right where, I, where I'm scoping right now. That's where I've got my video signal. And I bet, yeah, if I, if I were to inject video into here, I could uh, give myself an external video input on this transistor right there, onto the base of that transistor. And then I'd have an external video input. As I say, that, that would be quite useful on a small monitor like this to have an external video input. Not a bad little picture actually. I, it's uh, better than I remember. It's got, yeah, the, the dot, the dot, uh, uh, it's not a real high resolution tube by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, it certainly is not bad. I mean, that's why we used the set when it was uh, being used. For all the years it was used for. When I had the other one, that is, of course. I think the RF gain's a little bit high. Let's tweak the RF gain down a bit. I have really strong, really strong signals here. Okay, that's a little better. I got a cable that's bad as well. Getting a bit of a bit of noise on the low band. The high band looks good. Very clear. Oh no, I think I did okay. I paid twenty bucks for this set. Which is twenty bucks more than I paid for the other the other small one I've got that was given to me. I have another another little five inch one. Different brand. Uh, it's a it's a stand taller, right? Instead of it being a a flat set like this it stands a little taller and it has a video input on it yeah it looks it looks good the the, the picture the picture looks good on so I think what we'll do is we're going to put a video in on on this one I'm not going to do it right now just because I don't have time anyway I'm going to uh, I'm going to close this one up for now 
We'll uh, take this one apart again at a future date, and I'll put a video in. Put a, I just don't feel like doing it right now. I got other stuff that I gotta gotta work on. So um, this was more of a check this out and see if it works and see how good it will look. And it's not looking bad. So I say that's just my uh, my cable in here is a bit noisy. I think it's gonna. I got a loose ground or something on the on the coax. Got a webcam right here. That's that's a live webcam. Uh, live webcam action right there. As you can see, the, the higher channels are fine. It's just just a couple of them are a bit noisy. I can't leave that on. Anyway, it's working a lot better <laughs> than when I first started. In that case, it wasn't working at all because it wasn't turning on. But uh, we got that part fixed up and uh, got it tuning everything in okay. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. We'll pick this one up in a future video and we'll add an AV input on it. Pretty sure I did that on my other one too. I had an AV input on it, if I remember correctly. Anyway, to say it, it, it went in the garbage years ago because the CRT had gotten so weak that you could barely see anything on it. It was so dim. This one here is in good shape. It's got lots of brightness. Lots of life left in this one. Doesn't look like it really had all that much use. One thing I didn't show you, on the side there's a degauss button that you can degauss the tube. Manually, there's a little button on the side. And of course it's got horizontal hold and I should have cleaned those controls while I was at it too. Horizontal hold and vertical hold. Anyway, um, auto color that turns on the AFC as well to lock it in on the station a little better. Channel 27 is my uh, other my other channel, my other test channel. Anyway, that's uh that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.